Hello and welcome back. Today we'll return to um, uh, normal maths. However, it is a five-star question. I love my difficult questions. This question had been forgotten. Um, it hasn't. It's actually a question of geometric series. Um, and practically every question on, on this topic has been either on my special papers or special extensions or um, the S and T versions at different times. And this has been um, omitted. It, it, it was never. So I couldn't resist it. And I put in one of my synoptic papers very, very recently. It's very, very unusual. I haven't actually written it myself, almost certainly. Uh, but um, I'll be interested to see if uh, there are other ways that uh, you can actually do this question to the one that I'm going to show you. It's a very brief question. This is what he's actually saying. Um, he's saying we have a convergent GP. So there is a sum to infinity. So, so we got there a GP, that's the givens now in the problems, where A and R in the standard notation, first term and common ratio are positive. <coughs> so this is what is given. Further to that, the, um, shall I write it uh, perhaps, maybe, maybe I shouldn't, okay. And we have as the sum to infinity to consider and the second term. So this is now the, the things we consider is to prove that if a geometric series converges and the first term as well as the common ratio are positive, then we have to prove that the sum to infinity is at least four times the second term. Okay, so this is basically the question. And the question is, where do we start? <coughs> I do apologize about my cough. Okay, this is one way of dealing with a problem like this. We're going to start with a ratio. I want to say ratio, not common ratio. The ratio of the two quantities that I'm trying to find. So... The sum to infinity over, not four times u2, but of course over u2. And I want to come up eventually with the fact that this is at least four. Okay, because it's what I'll try to prove. Okay, for this there are formulas. Of course, the sum to infinity, there's a standard formula, a over one minus r, and the second term is a r. The A's will cancel and careful when you're manipulating your fractions, we don't make any mistakes, is this quantity here. And now what? I'm going to do some partial fractions for this. Uh, by inspection, R is equal to zero. It's going to be a one over R. R is equal to one is also exactly the same thing. Just checking that uh, <coughs> there's no mistakes in there. One minus R plus r gives me 1, and that's that. And uh, probably, because I don't like it as 1 minus r is uh, bad karma, I'm going to put the minus at the front and write it as r minus 1, which is exactly the same thing. So what have I done so far? Have I done something meaningful? At first glance, it looks like I'm, I'm playing for time and I'm not really going anywhere. But if you think about this quantity here, let me use a different color pen. This is the required ratio that I'm trying to consider and look what it turned out to be here is actually a function of r and this function of r is of course 1 over r minus 1 over r minus 1 and for this this we can plot we can do calculus you can do whatever we need to do so I'll just use a calculus method, which is, is actually the, probably the easiest thing to do in something like this. So what do we get for that? Uh, let's get first derivative to look for stationary points. So we got 1 minus r squared plus 1 over uh, minus to the top plus r minus 1 all squared. And then, of course, we can differentiate because we need to check the nature uh, we could possibly could do the graph maybe for something like this, but let's let me have it ready. <coughs> so it's all done. And that's going to be two over positive two over r cubed. And then it's a minus two over 
r minus 1 all cubed. So this is the derivative. And where do we go for that? Oh, well, first of all, we look for stationary points. So we're looking basically for local maxima or, or local minima. And we hope to get the right quantity. So we're setting the second derivative equal to 0. So in this particular case, um, f double dash, no, sorry, double dash, single dash is equal to 0. So this quantity is 0. I'm going to write it on separate sides. So if that is equal to 0, I'll move that to the other side, 1 over r minus 1 all squared. Flip both sides. So we have r squared is equal to r minus 1 all squared, since they're, it's exactly the same thing. So expand it. And we got r squared minus 2r plus 1. r squared cancel. And we go r is equal to a half. So we're stationary in one for one particular value of the common ratio for the GP, and that is a half. Okay, so first of all, let's find what is that minimum, local minimum or local maximum possibly. Actually, let's, let's um, uh, yeah, let's do that first. So F of R, or rather let's write it straight away. I have everything here. F of a half, and what's the best one to use? So it's probably better to use this quantity here. Is going to be one over a half. One take away half is a half, which is one over a quarter. So it's actually four. So we found when the common ratio takes the value of four, okay, then we have either a local maximum or a local minimum, which there could be true maximums or true minimums. First of all, let's check what it is. I'm going to use the second gradient. So f double dash over half. So this is now what I've got so far. And that's my f of a half. Like a t there. My hand is shaking really badly. Okay. f double dash over half is equal to 2 uh, over an eighth minus 2. Uh, two um what do we have there two take away uh, a half take away one is minus an eighth so it's basically an eighth uh and an eighth uh in uh, the second derivative so that's going to be a 16th so 16 16 16 16 plus 16 which is 32 positive so it's a at this stage local min okay so now what we have found out is we're not, we cannot really say, unless uh, we know that this is a true minimum, that uh, this is the case. So how do we argue the case? Uh, the easiest thing to do is to actually sketch this graph. It's not actually that difficult to sketch. What does it look like? Uh, where, do, where do we go? We probably go uh, for something like this, which clearly, I'm going to do it here. I need to clear some of this board. So what is that? That's the graph of R versus F of R, where F of R is, of course, is this quantity here. Um, it will have asymptote, vertical asymptote at R is equal to zero, looking at this quantity here. And it will also have a vertical asymptote at R is equal to one. OK. And we have a local minimum whose coordinates are half four this is a local minimum so this is the half and let's say somewhere here is the four okay uh what does the graph lie okay first of all it's a minimum local minimum well <clears throat> there's no more asymptotes and the value of r remember because um it is a convergent um gp okay they are technically should be between minus one and one but in this particular case we did say in the beginning a and r are positive and it converts therefore the only part of the graph is between zero and one we have asymptotes there's no more stationary points between those two asymptotes and therefore our graph of f of r which is between zero and one looks something like that this is the four and this is the half so this is not just a local minimum but it's actually, it is a true minimum. Um, it's a little bit messy have that presented on my board, but what have I found so far? I have found that my f of r, I'm going to write in brown here, 
that's my f of r, is at least, could be equal, 4. But what is f of r? f of r is, of course, the sum to infinity over my u2 is greater or equal to 4. And therefore, in this particular case, I am done. I've proven the desired result. I hope you followed it. A very unusual question. Another, as I just said in the beginning, I'd be interested to see if anybody comes up with a different approach. I use pure calculus for this one, <coughs> which is something that somebody with just basic, I'm not saying the question is easy, not at all. It's actually quite a difficult question uh, to, to think about how to approach it. Should be able to follow what I've done in there. Okay, for the time being, I'm signing out and I'll see you real soon.